autoimmune epilepsy refers to an epilepsy whereby the underlying etiology of the epilepsy is an immune-mediated uh, irritation or attack of the nervous system. I think it's important to know that, first of all, epilepsy is a very, very common uh, disorder. And in fact, about a third of patients with epilepsy uh, continue to have seizures despite the use of anti-epileptic medications. And in addition to that, most epilepsies, uh, the etiology of most epilepsies is actually unknown. So uh, this is a very exciting time because we're recognizing a new form of epilepsy, uh, autoimmune epilepsy, that uh, potentially is going to be amenable to treatment with drugs other than anti-epileptic medications. There are certain characteristics uh, that we look for in patients that, that raise the, the concern for the possibility of an autoimmune etiology. And firstly, I think it's important to recognize that the types of patients we would consider using an immunotherapy in for a suspected autoimmune epilepsy, generally we're targeting patients that are not responding to their anti-epileptic medications. So we're generally interested in patients, for example, that have uh, cryptogenic epilepsy, uh, whereby they're having uh, frequent seizures uh, and they're uh, not responding to anti-epileptic medications. Now, medically intractability generally uh, encompasses the patients who have failed at least two anti-epileptic medications. The other types of clues to a diagnosis of an autoimmune epilepsy are obviously the presence of a neural antibody uh, that we would detect through this autoimmune epilepsy evaluation. But there are other uh, clues before you do that evaluation that would potentially want to lead you to do the evaluation in the first place, and those would include a family history or a personal history of autoimmunity, a personal history of cancer, a history of smoking. Um, uh, psychiatric illness, for example, hallucinations that are coexisting uh, with the patient's epilepsy, or the presence of neurologic uh, co uh, uh, conditions, for example, the presence of myoclonus or tremulousness or headache um, or other multifocal neurologic complaints. We have had patients, for example, uh, who present with a suspected autoimmune epilepsy where we uh, commence a trial of immunotherapy. And we have had uh, some great successes in the sense that patients uh, who are having uh, very frequent seizures that were medically intractable actually become seizure-free or have a significant reduction of greater than 50% in their seizure frequency. So, and this is with immunotherapy, not anti-epileptic medications. Uh, the evaluation is complex, but it is comprehensive. And it's important to remember that uh, there isn't any sense in ordering one or two antibodies when you have a patient with an autoimmune epilepsy. Because patients with autoimmune epilepsy, whether they have voltage-gated potassium channel complex antibodies, or whether they have voltage-gated calcium channel antibodies, or even NMDA receptor antibodies, those patients can have very, very similar clinical presentations. And so you cannot define the epilepsy by the antibody. And really, that comprehensive evaluation, I think, is very, very helpful. The presence of the neural antibody assists the clinicians in two ways. One, if you have an antibody that's relevant or pertinent to epilepsy, then that raises the possibility that the condition is autoimmune and can assist the clinician in making decisions regarding immunotherapy. The second uh, area whereby it can be helpful is that sometimes the neural antibody profiles can be predictive of a specific type of cancer and certain antibodies can direct the clinician towards specific cancer types. At the Mayo Clinic Neurobiology Laboratory, we offer a uh, consultant-led uh, uh, interpretation. So when the neural antibodies are identified, the profile of the antibodies is reviewed by a neurologist who practices autoimmune neurology. Uh, the uh, interpretation is created uh, relevant uh, references for the treating clinician are provided. And again, if the clinicians have any questions or are concerns or want additional advice, they have the uh, opportunity of calling us by telephone and discussing the case with us. It's also important to note the presence of the antibody needs to be interpreted in the clinical context, but also the absence of an antibody does not rule out an autoimmune epilepsy. And a patient may have an epilepsy that's medically intractable and may have many of the other features uh, other than the neural antibodies that may indicate the likelihood of an autoimmune etiology. And those patients also warrant consideration for immunotherapy.